So we've gone from the remainder theorem now to the factor theorem. So when we talked about divisibility, we're talking about if something is a factor of something else. Well, obviously, if I'm talking about the division algorithm and we're dealing with roots, and I know if I divide by x minus a, and a happens to be a root in that case, well, my remainder is simply going to be zero. So my... Um, so basically what that's telling me is that f is going to have a factor of x minus a inside of there. And this is what this theorem is telling us. So in this case, let f be a field. f of x is an element inside of f adjoined x. And again, a is an element inside of f. So um, a is a root of the polynomial f of x if and only if x minus a is a factor in f of x. So it's an if and only if statement, which means we have to work it in both ways. So moving with the assumption that a is a root of the polynomial f of x, we want to be able to show that x minus a is a factor of f of x inside of f adjoint x. Now, this one is simply, we're just going to use the, the remainder theorem to show that this is going to be true, and then the, the, the definition of divisibility. So we assume that A is a root of f of x, then by the division algorithm, we have the following. This means I can take f of x, and I could write this as x minus a q of x plus, plus r of x. Now using the remainder theorem, this is simply the same as x minus a, because this is being one of the factors, q minus x or sorry, this is what I'm dividing by. So when I'm dividing by this, I know that my remainder is f evaluated at a. But now we originally made the assumption that a is a root. So when I plug a into f, I'm just going to get zero. So x minus a, q of x, f of x. So this is telling me that I could take f of x and I can write it as a product of x minus a and q of x. This for us is the definition of divisibility. So we say that x minus a is a factor, oops, not f of a, of f of x. So that's showing the, the one direction that we are there. Now we need to show the other direction. So in the other direction, we are now assuming that x minus a is in fact a factor, and we need to be able to show that it, uh, that A is a root of that polynomial. So we assume that X minus A is a factor. Of F of X, which means I could write F of X as X minus A times Q of X. Or actually, I should use a different thing. So let's not call this Q of X. Let's call this um, G of X where g of x is an element inside of f adjoint x. Well, we just need to be able to show that a is going to be a, a root of this. And in order to do that, we just need to plug in a. So if I plug in f of a, well, this is going to give me a minus a g of x, or sorry, g of a, because I'm substituting in a for this, a minus a, this is just the zero element of g of a, which again is the zero element. Thus, a is in fact a, a root. And that completes our proof. So when it tells us if a is a root, then I know x minus a has to be a factor. And if x minus a is a factor, that means a has to be a, a root of this. All right, so this kind of gives us an idea of how we can start breaking down the, the idea of whether or not or 
um, answering the question whether or not something is or, or a polynomial is irreducible versus reducible. If we know that the polynomial that we have to deal with, if it has a root inside of there, then I know that x minus a has to be one of the factors, thus I could break it down. Um, so let's go through an example of this. Let's go through a couple of examples, actually. So in example four, what we want to do here is we want to determine if h of x, which is going to be x minus 3, is a factor of f of x, uh, which is equal to x to the power of 6 minus x cubed plus uh, x minus 5. And all this is going to be done in z mod 7 adjoin x. So we know from the, the last theorem that uh, h of x, which is equal to x minus 3, we want to be able to determine whether or not it's a factor. Well, uh, this is a factor if, remember, x minus a, so that a in this case is 3, if 3 is a root. Now, I need to be careful when playing around with this one because, again, if I look at Z mod 7, I could think to myself, well, maybe I need to check all of the elements in, inside of here. Uh, but really, it's specifically asking for the H of X being X minus 3. So in this case, I'm specifically looking at that element um, 3 inside of Z mod 7. And I want to show that that one is a root. And if that one is a root, then my X minus 3 will, in fact, be a factor. So I don't need to check everything. I just need to check that one. So if I plug in f of 3, uh, well, this is going to be 3 to the power of 6, which is 729. Um, I'll do the calculations at the end for being under uh, z, uh, z mod 7. Uh, minus um, 3 to the 3, which is 27. Uh, plus 3, minus 5. And this works out to being... works out to being 700, which is nice because when I uh, take this mod 7, that's going to give me a 0. So it perfectly divides 7. So this means in Z mod 7, this is going to be a root. And because this is a root, then X minus 3 is a factor of F of X. So therefore, X minus 3 by that last theorem is a factor. Okay, well, let's look at a slight variation of this now. So in terms of variation, I'm really just talking about the wording of this. So the last one we specifically asked if something is uh, uh, a factor of f of x, which is basically saying, can I reduce f of x? And then the answer to that would be to be yes, I can factor up x. So in this case, I want to show that x to the power of 7 minus x to the 5 plus 2x to the 4 minus 3x squared minus x plus 2 is reducible in uh, the rationals of joint x. So I want to be able to see, can I, I, break this, I break this down? So the easiest thing to be able to do in this case is to determine whether or not I have a a root inside of here, because being able to try and factor a, a degree seven polynomial, no thank you. There's no nice way of being able to do this. So let's look at those, those roots inside of there. Now, rationals, there's a lot of things that could potentially be roots. So let's, let's check the obvious ones out there. If I plugged in zero, well, I'd have zero to the seven minus zero to the five plus two times zero to the four minus three times zero squared minus zero. Okay, all of that cancels out. Now I'm left with a plus two. That's not going to work. That doesn't give me a zero. So I can try my next obvious ones, which are going to be plus minus one. So we'll start with plus one. So example five, again, I'll just write down f of x. x to the seven minus x to the five 
plus 2x to the 4, minus 3x squared, uh, minus x plus 2. So if I substitute and say x is equal to 1, what does this give me? f of 1, um, 1 to the 7 is still going to be 1, minus 1 to the 5, minus 1. Uh, 1 to the 4 is still 1, so this is plus 2. Uh, I'm going to still have 1, so this is minus 3, minus 1, plus 2. So these two are going to cancel out here. Uh, I have a minus 4, plus 4, so these are going to cancel out here, and I'm left with a 0. So this tells me that when I substitute 1, which is an element of the rationals, I'm going to get 0. Thus, by the factor theorem, x minus 1 is a factor. So f of x is reducible. Now, in this case, if I went through the, the plus and minus one, I still didn't get anything out there. I could try different values, but I may want to think at this point in time, there might be a better way of being able to do that. Um, we're not going to get to that part in this class. We'll probably get to that in the, the next class. But at least for this point in time, this is the, the one trick that we have. Let's try easy ones first. If we get somewhere, awesome. If we don't, okay, let's move on. All right, for the last example here, we want to know for what values of k is x minus 2 a factor of if I have x to the power of 4 minus uh, 5x cubed plus 5x squared plus 3x plus k in um, the rationals adjoint x. So as we clearly see with these ones, we can have a lot of questions in here that are computational based rather than very heavy proof based, which is, is nice to be able to play around with some ones that are, are not proofs all the time. So example six, and again, same idea, same using that theorem in there. Uh, I'm dividing, or I want to know uh, what values of K make X minus two a factor, or if this is even possible. Again, the value that I have to get out of there um, for K has to be a rational. Um, so if I work all this out and I get something that's not rational, well, then that's, that's a problem, but that's not going to be an issue in this case. So I have F of X is equal to x to the 4 minus 5x cubed plus 5x squared um, plus 3x plus k. So we know if x minus 2 is a factor. So if it is a factor, then x equals 2 has to be a root. So to be able to figure out, well, what is that value of k? Well, that means when I substitute in, in 2 into this function f of x, I have to be able to get this equal to 0 in the end. So this will define what 2 or what k has to be. So f of 2, this is 2 to the 4 minus 5 times 2 to the 3 plus 5 times 2 to the 2 plus 3 times 2, plus k. And again, this all has to equal to, to 0. So working this all out, 2 to the 4 gives me 16. Uh, 2 to the 3 is 8, times 5 gives me 40, but minus 40. Uh, 2 squared, 4 times 5 is 20, so plus 20, uh, plus a 6, plus k is equal to 0. I can simplify what's on my, my left-hand side. This is going to work out to being 2, plus k is equal to 0, or k is negative 2. So that means when I have k is equal to negative 2, all of this will cancel itself out when I um, evaluate f of 2, which means x minus 2 is a factor of f of x, which is x to the 4, minus 5x cubed plus 5x squared plus 3x. Um, now not plus k, it's going to be minus, minus 2. 
So all variations of questions basically asking exactly the same thing, but just simply using the, the uh, uh, factor theorem. I was going to say remainder theorem, but it's not. It's the factor theorem.